Okay, so um, the reason that I uh, did it the way I did it with the three small textures, um, again, it, each method here has its pros and cons. The pro about that is you can change the colors to whatever you want once in, in MovieZoo. Um, the cons are you're, have, you know, you're loading up a bunch of different textures, it's going to take up more me memory, but since they're so small and it's actually the same texture, it might not be a big deal. Now, another con, obviously, would be that you know, you're not going to be able to get anything really um, uh, detailed and not going to get any really detailed textures um, into your model. So the other way uh, that we can do it is um, bake the texture. Um, so again, we'll see that we have uh, this to go up to. Um, I've actually got to take those uh, maps back out of there, so I'm just going to clear those all out. We're going to get back to the way it was before. And uh, of course, now we have this texture, this texture again. Now, let's say this wasn't just red, blue, and yellow. It was, you know, there's a lot of detail in here. And say this was a, I don't know, a fine artisan made wood stool with lots of carvings and so on. You could, uh, you know, do a really detailed model. And, and you can burn, uh, excuse me, bake this texture onto your model. And the way that you do that is uh, go into uh, rendering and click on render to texture. Now, the settings that we have, we have box one selected, that's the model here, and the, the name really doesn't matter at this point. Um, but what you want to look at is this automatic flatten UVs. Um, that's in map channel one, that's going to come into play in a minute. And most of these, um, uh, these uh, settings can be left uh, the way they are. By the way, when you come in here, this is not going to be here. Um, so you're going to need to add that. Um, right now, you have uh, use this automatic unwrap selected on channel one, which is fine. And uh, what you want to do is uh, leave the, most of the settings the way they are. You want save source and duplicate source to be actually, yeah, that's fine. Um, and uh, and here, uh, you actually want to, I guess, change these both to render. Uh, it probably doesn't really matter uh, at this point uh, because we're not really rendering inside 3ds Max, so uh, it's not a big deal. But um, I just change them both. So what you want to do is add in here a. Um, uh, we can do complete map or diffuse map. One of the problems you're going to run into when doing either one of these, and maybe somebody's got a better way to do this, is uh, is lighting. You're going to need to light your model, or the shadows from the ambient lighting are going to show up on your texture. I'm going to select a 512 by 512 texture. I don't even know if that's uh, too big or too small, but since this is a fairly simple texture, I don't think it's going to matter, but you do want make sure that your map is going to be called, let's go back to my footstool here, uh, footstool, uh, text footstool, okay, and I'm going to overwrite that one because I've done this before. The Targa settings, um, defaults are fine, hit yes, and then I'm going to basically, here I'm going to click render, and I have to overwrite it because once again I've done this before, but you'll see that. Um, this worked, okay, this is the texture all laid out with the UVs, however there's going to be some dark areas, so when I close this, um, what I want to do is go back into the material editor, editor, create a new material slot, and for the diffuse channel, I want to select that bitmap that I just created, which is right here, and open, and then I'm going to drop this on, and show it in the, uh, a map viewport. What you'll notice is it's really dark along the back, and that's because uh, you it's basically not lit when you uh, render this texture. So uh, I'm going to actually go back to this one and show you how to fix that. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. Let's see, I can just clear out the map. And um, so the way you fix that is you basically, as far as I know, and again, I could be wrong. Um, you need to light this with lights. So I'm going to create a few lights. Standard, Omni. Uh, I'll put one there, put one there, one there, one there, and maybe right there on top. And on the top one, I'll just move it. Let's see. We're not on top. Let's 
bring it over up so that uh, the model is fairly well lit and the lighting in a movie movie uh, zoo is going to still affect your model um, s slightly but you're going to want to have this more or less evenly lit when you bake your texture so a few lights around it should do the trick you gotta, you gotta watch all your angles um, it's gonna be dark on the bottom but we're not really gonna see the bottom so that's no big deal make sure that all these shadows are pretty much gone um, there's some one here let's move this up move it over that's the wrong one. Yeah. Um, so now it's going to bake uh, like this. And again, there's still some more shadows. I mean, you could take, take your time to build a, light, a lighting rig to make this all evenly lit uh, if you wanted to. I'm just showing you what your kind of the basic stuff that you're going to need to do to get this lit properly. This out a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to, once again, bake my texture. Uh, let's model first. Under texture, okay. The same settings are going to be in here that was in before. Uh, and that's fine. I just want to overwrite what I did before. So I'm just going to hit render. It's going to have to be overwrite, yes. See, now everything's a little bit brighter. So I'm going to close that. And in the material editor, once again, M, bring in a, grab a new material slot and bring that bitmap in that I just created and I will put that on and show in the viewport and now it's it's lit better I could have done a better job with some of these other lights but um, these shadows um, are actually baked in so that's going to show up in uh, MovieZoo. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into MovieZoo. I'm going to put import. I'm going to grab that footstool. Actually, that's not going to work. I need to re-export. Uh, I think I need to re-export, so I'm going to go into grab it. Export. Export selected. Okay, I'm going to overwrite that old one. And settings are also good here. And then may or may not work. I'm going to have to delete one of those textures, those target files that are in here. Uh, uh, let's see what happens. I'll just click on it and hit OK. Okay, that actually did work. It came in with my baked texture. You can see if I go into the edit, it actually worked. And of course, you can remove this if you want um, and you know, change the color one color but so now there's basically only uh, one texture on there and I don't know if it stays in or if we lose it like I don't I'm not I don't know a movie uh, zoo that well either so I don't know if we actually lose that texture and have to re-import the model but uh, obviously you can see that just re-import that Now something really strange happens here if you try to use um, ID textures. Uh, I'll show you that. If uh, it doesn't crash on me, I'm going to put Use ID Textures and select the footstool. And I'll watch what will happen. It'll come in. But if you right click on it, it's probably going to crash. And if it doesn't crash, What's going to happen is you're going to get a color chip for every color on this. And there's a uh, hundred and God knows how many. I can't even look down that far. It basically takes every single color and um, uh, changes. So, that, so this is really bogging down my memory right now because there's so many colors. But So you, you, you probably don't want to do it that way. There might be a way to do that properly, but I don't know what it is. Um, so... But this is where you bring uh, a model from 3ds Max into MovieZoo without too many problems or crashes. 
I uh, hope this was helpful. If anybody has any better hints for how to do this or make it easier or quicker, I would love to know. Just uh, drop me a note on the boards.